Hello, I'm Robert, fact checker and science blog and helping people scared of many things. And this time it's about why Trump can't use martial law to redo the US election. And there's a lot of confusion and misunderstanding here. The election is set by the Constitution. And even in the States, many people don't seem to understand how the US Constitution works. That you have these three separate branches. You have the, uh, the judiciary, you have the legislative, legislative, legislature, and leg the legislative branch, and you have the executive branch, and then you have the constitution. And the president is just the executive. The president carries out the laws that have been established by the legislative branch, as inter interpreted by the judiciary branch, or the justices, and. The, the executive orders that the, the president does, they have to be understood within the context of both the legal laws of the legislative branch and the interpretation of the judiciary branch. And he, has, he can only work within them. And the whole thing is with, within the constitution. And the constitution itself can be changed, but not by the president. To change the constitution, it has happened a few times, to change the constitution last time was connected with pro prohibition or something they changed the constitution correct now i don't know which, i can't remember which was the last one but the to change the constitution requires a two over three super majority in the house a two over three super majority in the senate it requires uh, votes in each individual individual state a majority in three quarters of the states it's not like um, an electoral college it's uh you've got to have each state has to vote for it and then so California has to vote, Texas has to go vote, uh, Kansas has to vote, and each, all of them. And then three quarters of the states have to come to a majority decision, popular vote in that state. And once you've, got, once you've got all of that done, then you can change the constitution. But it's done in a quite long process. So the two super majorities first lead to establishing of a big kind of conference thing where they work out what the actual change of the constitution is going to be. And that takes quite a long time. And once that is done, then they put it to all the states. And then that can be quite a long process going through all the states, uh, and finally approving this change that has been established in that big, that big gathering that was set up by the Congress. And there's no way that this is going to happen between now and the 20th of January. I mean, that's pretty obvious. To start with, Trump doesn't have a supermajority in either of the houses. He has actually got a minority in the House, and we, and we don't know if he's going to have a majority in Congress uh, after after the it, it's it's far too soon. Let, not going to likely to happen between now and the, the sixth and the, the sixth and twentieth. He's got fourteen days to try and change the constitution and redo the election. That's not going to work. And you know, try and get and if any and the, he wouldn't even have a majority in the Senate. I don't think a bit far from a majority. Not many people would support it. So, um, so then, the if you look at martial law, then people say, "Oh well, he can declare martial law." It's not actually clear that the, that the president can do that without the Congress. It's one of these grey area things. But if he was able to declare martial law, then by the case of Ex Parte Milligan, which is from 1866, then civilians can't be tried in a military tribunal as long as the civil courts are still open, and obviously they are. The United States doesn't degenerate into chaos. In fact, there's many chaos, not even any riots. So for him to declare martial law, it's not going to mean that martial, that the martial legal system, it's not going to be that. It's not going to be have martial military tribunals, and it, it doesn't mean soldiers shooting civilians. The, uh, the all the federal laws still apply. The, um, the the main change that he could possibly do is if did the Insurrection Act, and that would mean that. It's an absolute emergency situation where you've got riots, which are not actually happening, so it'd be very difficult for him to actually invoke this. But supposing he did, then he, he would, suppose somehow he did, some riots suddenly started flaring up and then he invoked it, and used that as an excuse. Then um, they would be very limited to controlling those riots, and the people, and there would be this power to detain people without um, them having to be able to see their legal representative uh, for the duration of the emergency. It's just a practical thing. 
they haven't lost their legal rights. It's just a practical thing that this is called habeas corpus, and they just they don't have the they don't have this right to see their um, to, to request a lawyer for the duration of the emergency, um, just to be, just so they can be um, so you can basically round up troublemakers quickly and can can keep and keep them without having to go through legal process for them all. And that's basically all the all the all the other laws apply. Soldiers can't shoot them or anything like that. That's the Insurrection Act, and so, um, and then as for redoing the election, it's not even true if it's legally possible. And uh, there has to be some reason. But if it is possible, there has to be some reason based on some flaws in the process. And with vote counted and electors voted too, all court cases are over, and they they set an end date for legal challenges. And that date has now passed. So, in, and individual states um, could even individual states and then the entire federal redo can redo be done, it's not at all clear and um, it's not clear that the president can, I said that, he can invoke the Martin Insurrection Act and that's more limited and um, he can't send troops, some people say he could send troops into Congress he can't do that, that's the executive branch interfering with the legislative branch, absolutely prohibited and the military follow the constitution and they would not obey such an order is uh, the United States has got a very very strong constitution, and the officers in the United, in the uh, they respect the constitution way above whatever personal feelings they may, might have about Trump if any of them do support him. They, 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 for them, the constitution is paramount, and they and they make this oath to uh, is to follow the orders of the of the president, not of Trump. They don't take a vote an oath to Trump when he he comes into power. They have a, an ongoing oath the elected president and that just continues and so officers have been there for decades they are constantly have this oath to follow the president whoever it is so on the 20th of January at midday their vote their oath will automatically transfer to the new president and Trump then if he gives them an order after midday on the 20th of January then they're going to look at the new president and say should I do this they're not going to pay any attention to Trump. So, in this background, and then the, his followers can protest on the 6th of January of Congress. And this is a formal protest. This happened last time in, I um, can't remember last time. Oh, yes, in 2016. The, uh, then, the, and I think Biden was presiding over that because he was the outgoing um, vice president. And he, the, the, the several people were objecting to the 2016 election and but in the house but they didn't get anyone in the senate to support them and you have to have both one of each so it, it was just people protesting and just said do you have he said to each one of you do do you have a senate supporting they said no they said on to the next one and so about a half dozen people also stood up and said and said their piece and then that was it and that's probably most of most likely what we happened on the sixth but if they do manage to get a senator to support it it's much harder to get a senator to support this then uh, on the sixth, then it becomes a recess, which has happened before. I think two thousand or something, and they recess for two hours and they debate it, and they can, they come back and vote. And they would have to do that for each vote, that each state, and there would be three or four states. How many is it they have to do? I think it's four. I can't remember now. But they would have to chip swap, and so for each one, they would have to do a recess for two hours. Then they come back again, and then they vote on it, and they they just don't have the votes. So many um, Republicans, uh, uh, senators already said that they acknowledge Joe Biden. So they're not going to get a majority in, even in the Senate. And obviously don't get it in the in the House. They'd have to have a majority in both houses. If it did continue, and if that did happen, and if they, they, they couldn't, it's very unlikely they actually override and, and take these, these, these uh, have an alternative. But it doesn't matter either way. So yeah, so it would end up, I don't know if I need to explain that bit of the process. Or just very quickly, then um, if they did, uh, if they did manage that, but they're not going to do it, then what happens next is that they'd invalidate the, the count, vote count for four states, so those would be discounted. That would bring Biden's majority down to below the 270 limit. At that point, then the Senate, the the House, decides a new president, and they do it by state by state votes, and each state, depending on which 
the majority of the representatives whether they're saying if Biden or Trump would win. So then if all the uh, Republican states in the House at that point then said, right, we vote for Trump, then the, it's, they would like, they would probably be able to swing it and get Trump as president. But of course, most states are not going to do that because they think this whole thing, they would, they would be a nothing stock in their own state if they, um, if they went along with this. You know, they, they, these people have to think about their own re-election, even if it, even, not, even if personally, many of them would care a lot about the integrity of the constitution and the integrity of the electoral process. They would just look at this and say, they've got no reason for doing this. So I, I can't go along with this. So even if it went as far as that, I can't see a majority would vote for, for Trump. It just, just doesn't make sense. But that, that can't happen because he doesn't have a majority in both houses. Indeed, even in the Senate, I would expect the vast majority of the senators, even most of the Republicans, would probably vote against in a, in a situation like this. So, no, there's no way that this election the result has been decided. And there's no way it's going to be changed now. And uh, whoever loses, they always have this disappointment and regret and you know, think that something went wrong in 2016, it was the Democrats. And they, many of the Democrats thought it was unfair and that, they, that, that, that uh, Trump shouldn't have won and so on. And now it's the turn of the Republicans to be in the same position. But it's a clear, very set, carefully set out process. There's nothing, absolutely no doubt, that um, Biden is the president-elect and there's nothing that Trump can do about it and martial law will not change it. It can't change it.